Hey, what's up, Sandy? Hey, Michael. We got a special guest yeah, here with us. That. What's up, Ollie? Hi, how are you, everyone? Uh, interview number two. Very happy to be here. Very happy to be with you guys. Thank you for having me. No, yeah, no, glad to you. have you here. Yeah, I think you. today's topic is going to be pretty cool. What is it going to be, Michael? Come on, tell everybody. So make the most of this situation. Especially Ali, you can give us a little bit more insight on this. I know this happens a lot when we're either in a dead end contract with a marketing agency and we're like, we've only gotten one Facebook comment on all our ads or one call from them. Or when can we know what are some signs when it's time to, all right, it's time to switch. They're just giving us bogus analytics. Sure. I think a good time to switch is when it's only analytics and you cannot tell any difference in your office if it's just fancy reports and no translation and more patients in the office. Again, to our last conversation about the office staff and the manager and everyone knowing what's going on with marketing, that's what it matters because you could be spending, you could be getting great results, but not converting them in-house. So it's not really the marketing company's issue there. But then there's a problem with the marketing company may not be delivering results. And, you know, as good as your team is, they don't have leads to work with or leads to work on. So you're stuck, you know, wondering what's happening. I think one big sign of looking to possibly switch or even contacting your current company is what am I, what are, what are they doing for me? What am I getting? What is my 500 or 300 or 5,000 a month getting me? Can I see a list item? And okay, what are these list items doing to help bring me results? For example, we just had someone that came to us, Sandy, from one of your lectures. She said she was doing Facebook ads like $900. You know, 900 is not a small amount for a Facebook budget. She was just doing Facebook ad, uh, call ads. Those call ads generated 15 calls for the $900. And her office manager couldn't attribute one single phone call to that. So again, the dashboards, the reports, the numbers are all good. But if it doesn't correspond inside the office, then that's when you should be starting to look around and ask some questions. You know, another thing that just recently came up with a friend of mine that's a dentist, a, a past client, actually. And she was saying like that the company they were working with, they were always doing really well, getting a lot, a lot of new patients. In the last three months, they're getting fewer and fewer new patients. And they're like, where did that momentum go? And so when they contacted the marketing company, what they found out was like, at, whenever they first started with them, it was a smaller company and they were paying attention to the results. And then now they've delegated some of those responsibilities to other people and nobody's really watching. Yeah, that happens often. You know, companies get in the smooth sailing zone and they don't check each account or they get comfortable. But again, it's a two way streak. It's a company seeing what's going on, making changes, being proactive, checking in with the clients. Hey, is this working? You know, it looks right. like you're getting calls for emergency, but we don't have anything about emergency on your website. Can we add something like that? So it's a part of being proactive, both sides. And like we always say, if there's something going on with your practice, make sure it reflects in your marketing and your website. If someone's, you know, coming to you with a special offer or you're doing something offline in a Val pack, make sure it correlates online because the disconnect is going to waste money and, um, knowing where your money is going is important. Sometimes people spend, you know, $500 a month, that's 6,000 a year. They're going to get five, six patients out of that and make way more than 6,000. So they're not looking at the exact details. And then there's the clients that want to see exactly the details, how many leads they're getting, how many are converting. And that's something that internal has to also keep track of because it's real yeah. tough for us to know if the patient's actually coming in and accepting the case. Yeah, that, that totally makes sense. But what about like some practices that are marketing, maybe they're do a lot of like all on fours. Okay. And they were marketing that. And then, and then maybe now they want to do more veneers. Like how, how often should people be looking at that to switch it up? As often as you're doing them in your practice. So don't, yes, you should market what you want to be found for, but just saying I want to market veneers with never doing any veneer cases, never having any proof work, never showing your before afters, not having any veneer reviews, not having a happy patient that's done veneers. It's going to be a tougher sell than 
the guy that's doing ads right next to you that has 15 cases that has testimonials. So yes, you should always switch up your marketing, but also know you need things in place for it to work effectively. It's not just like, you know, tomorrow I want to say, Hey, I want to market to uh, vets. You know, I have to change a whole business model to go attract vets and similar to dentistry. If you're attracting Invisalign patients, that's different than implant patients or new patients emergency. So it's an overall approach with both the marketing company and the inside. And just talk to, talk to your marketing company. If you had, haven't talked for over a year, then, you know, that's a problem. You should, they should check in. You should check in what's going on. And you know what? You're, as you're saying this, and I, I knew it, but you know how you know something and you live it and then you hear somebody say it out loud and you're like, hmm. Because as you're talking, I'm thinking, you know, this is why it's so important for people to have their websites updated to match the procedures that they're marketing a duh and I run across that sometimes that people aren't doing that they want to do more of this there's nothing on their website about it mm -hmm. exactly yeah so Real quick, simple. yeah rewind a little bit Ali you said fancy reports what are fancy reports when it comes to like oh this is this is just fancy here. reports are you know I'm sure dentists have seen these all day. They get spammed all day in their emails. It's some guy that just created a free report plugging in the domain that scores like, you know, 10 things. Hey, this little thing is off this, you know, just finding my new things to kind of throw at you. That's, that's one fancy report. That's before someone sells you. So be careful when you see that when someone's trying to sell you marketing is they're just throwing you a generic report and that reports the same for everybody. Whereas with us, Anyone that comes through us from your group or mentions you or anyone, in fact, just says, hey, Ali, this is my website. This is my practice. Give me a free web assessment. We'll go there. And all the info we'll provide is for that practice. It's specific. We'll record a video. We'll show them exactly what's going on. So there's a generic report and an actual web assessment pre-sale to look at. I would call the one that doesn't get you any answers and is just generic, the fancy one. And then there's the marketing companies that are working with you. And then, you know, you say, you call them every month. I'm not getting any leads. They say, here's a report. Our report's showing you're getting uh, visits for this keyword. You know, it's showing green in this uh, category. But again, those don't mean anything to you. So a lot of times, like even with Google ads or Facebook ads, the dentist doesn't know if it's working or not. If you don't know it's working or not, it's probably not working. Because if you knew it was working, you, you know it'd be working. So... We always say like, turn it off, press pause, or tell the company to pause it for one week, two weeks, and see if there's any change in your business. Does your phone stop ringing? Does your lead stop? Does your front office say, hey, um, no one's calling us? And you'll know if, if something's working or not just by simply pressing on and off. And the, it's the easiest to do that with Google ads or Facebook ads, because you know they're just a faucet. If you stop paying, it's off. If you pay, it's on. But SEO is a little different. It's more long-term. It's harder to gauge results because you're really working. For example, someone hires us for SEO and we say, you know, it's six to 12 months for consistent results. And it's harder to gauge versus ads because they have to wait a little longer. So we always say, you know, don't throw $2,000 a month at SEO. And then in two months say that was too much. I'm uncomfortable. It didn't work. Throw 300 a month for 12 months at SEO and give it a chance to work, build the content, build your before afters, get your reviews, and you'll see it all come together much better than just throwing a lot of money for three months and, you know, getting out because it didn't work. That makes total sense to me. That reminds me like my reactivation project. People, it's a, it's like a course of three months, right? It's like, like most people just want to do one mailing. So it's the same thing. I totally get it. Yeah, it's, it makes sense. It's consistency with everything, not just in marketing, everything. Yeah, building yeah. that momentum. Yeah. You mentioned SEO, and we get this question a lot, Ali. How is it constantly being optimized for the fee that doctors are paying? So we hear that a lot, like we got to continue to optimize and optimize and optimize. But what does that really mean? Okay, so there's... A couple of ways to look at it. There's again, there's the companies that do SEO that you could is somewhat tangible, like us and other companies. Every month you're getting X amount of blog posts, you're getting X amount of social. 
that activity, that content, all that work is helping your SEO. For example, we have an Invisalign dentist. You could Google Invisalign dentist in Creveport, Missouri. You'll see he's on the map. You'll see he's in the organic. And how that's achieved is by constant content. Every month, we're blogging Invisalign for adults, Invisalign for teens, whatever those keywords are. So all that content we're adding on the website is helping him rank higher. That's the constant work when an SEO company says, what are we doing every month? Then there's a work that you can't point your finger to. That's the one you should question of like, you're paying 600. Someone says they're doing SEO. Well, what are they doing? Backlinking. I don't know. They said someone said backlinking when I first signed up. What does that mean? Backlinking somewhat old school. You know, backlinks are good from a reputable source, reputable related websites, but not like those linked farms and whatever people mm -hmm. used to do for SEO five, six years ago. So just watch out. What, what are you getting for your SEO? SEO is not magic anymore. It's just Google wants good content that applies to the person that's searching, that gets them what they want once they get to your site, that your bounce rate stays good, which means if someone gets to your site, they don't jump off right away because the search didn't match. So have a good site, put the content you want to be found for, keep pumping that content, just like how we're always trying to be in front of dentists to get our content out there. Same with the dentist. They always have to put themselves in front of potential patients with their content, which is their services, their work, their reviews. And that's how they get found with SEO. Gotcha. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. So then going back to the switching to marketing agencies, right? I remember one time I was trying to switch the practice that I worked at to another marketing agency. That media company came out to convince us to not switch. And I'm like, this is the first time I ever saw the media company ever, by the way, you know what I mean? Like, and it wasn't like they were always with us. What can we do or how can we streamline this process to make it as easy as possible, less of a headache to switch from one media company or marketing agency to doc sites, let's just say. To us or to anyone, own your domain, have it somewhere where either you, the companies, you know, other companies, they transfer the domain out easy. Other companies might give you a headache. They might make it make it like pulling teeth to get your domain. So you're like, I don't even want to cancel. It's like changing your internet. They make it so hard to cancel that you're like, I just don't want to deal with it. And trust me, it's worth that fight to deal with it because it's not that hard and you're going to save money. It's just like if I'm stuck with AT&T and we want to switch to Spectrum, it's a headache. I already know. Phones are going to go down. The internet's going to go down. They're going to do five things wrong. I'm going to have to call 16 departments. But at the end, it's worth it. With us, it's not like that. We'll help you with the transfer. But my example means that it's, it is worth the fight to get out of a marketing company that's not getting you results, that you're just paying money because you're used to paying the money. You see it on your bill. You don't look twice. It's part of everything. And you know you just let it go. Don't let it go. Look at it and see if it could be better. And yeah, so that's mm -hmm. kind of how, so sorry, back to your question, own your domain. Typically your emails are also something you want to either have with your IT company or yourself, because if your website company, for example, also manages your domain, a lot of the older website companies used to do that. They used to have the domain, the website and the email, and it makes switching much harder. And the emails are all like older, non-HIPAA compliant that may not be standard emails anymore. So they're just stuck to that because it's, again, email migration is another thing that's somewhat of a headache in some cases, but there's companies that could easily switch you. Many people use like a, um, Google Workspace, which is HIPAA compliant. Others use IT companies. There's partners I'm sure you guys know of that supply uh, different emails. So domain email, those things, should be easy to move around if you want to switch a marketing company. Otherwise, your Google My Business, that's your property. Always be the owner. Make the marketing company the manager. Your Facebook, you're the admin. You're the owner. The marketing company is the admin or a manager. You could remove them as you wish. Same with Google. So Google, Facebook, you're the owner. You just add and remove people as you see fit. Domain, same thing. You're kind of the owner. You just give people access to, uh, you know, make your website live or your email or whatever. And those are really the only things. And watch out for those. Uh, you know, you already know when you sign a long-term contract, but sometimes a renewal is a little tricky if you don't 
you know, like Cinderella, if you don't come down at 12 a.m. on a certain given time, you lose everything. It's like that. If you don't cancel within one day of one day of a calendar next year, you're auto renewed for another two years. You want to cancel 75% of the year up front. You know, all those games that you've heard of before. So we don't really need to do that because if you're not happy with us, we're not trying to force you to stay another two years. Why would we keep you? You're not happy. You're not going to be, you know what I mean? It's just not a good relationship to, to force someone to be with you if they're not happy. So we don't do long-term contracts, but even if you get in one for whatever reason, you get a better deal up front or whatever it is, you signed a one-year contract, just look at the renewal terms, look at the penalties, look at, make sure you, the domain's yours when it's over and those kind of things. That is just great advice for anybody listening. My goodness. I mean, I, I never really thought about that. I'm thinking about my own domain name, like, oh, maybe get that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to own it, yeah. Great hey. advice. Thank you. No, that's good. Maybe both you guys can kind of chime in on this. Um, sometimes office managers says it's the agency that's not working. And then sometimes the agency will say it's the front office. Right. So how can we determine that when we, keep when we break stats. Down? You have <laughs> you have to keep stats. So the for the because I'm, I'm always preaching that. So it's like for the front office, I'll speak from from that, from being in the office. When that somebody calls and they inquire, you need to mark it down. You need to find out how they heard about the practice. It's one of the first things that you're going to ask. Um, and how, did you get the appointment and did they show up? I mean, that's going to, that's how you've got the data there. Now, Ali can... Yeah, and I'll, I'll tell you the other side of it. And, you know, people call us and we're, we're, we don't get defensive. Like if they call us and they say, hey, what's going on? Where's my leads? We try to investigate what's going on. So first thing we do is we go to their web forms and we go through it with them. Hey, we see John Smith, you know, 10 people so far contacted you in May. What's up with those 10 people? Hey, Susie, where's... Blank, 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 blank. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, sorry. That's pointing the finger. Is that on you on in this case? And then there's a case where, yes, they have 10 leads. Susie's following up. Things are great. And then maybe, hey, let's tweak this offer. Let's let's do an emergency. Maybe you're in a competitive area. Let's add three different zip codes, you know, in your surrounding neighborhood that we could target people from. Just find a solution, not just Let's just sign up and not talk for two years and then cancel and move to another company and just jump, jump, you know. Oh, now that's a good point. That what you just said about let's not talk for two years. Now, how often should your marketing company be looking at this information and getting feedback and communicating? I mean, most practices, dental practice owners are business owners too, right? So uh, however many times a year you look at your sales reports and your numbers and you say hey i grew this quarter i grew x percent how's my marketing going great let's talk to the marketing guy let's go are we getting emergency you know it's got to be you can't just be a dentist you have to also look at your numbers you have to talk to your marketing people if you don't want to do it put someone in charge of it put your consultant in charge of it we talk to consultants often that the dentist is too busy, but someone there knows what's going on that could say, hey, it's working, it's not working, it's your fault, it's our fault, let's find a solution. It just makes sense to me. And it's kind of like you're throwing money at something, like find out how well it's doing, what, you know, get feedback. So that just makes sense to me. And they have time. It just is not a priority. You know, they, mm -hmm. they have time. How long yeah. does it take? It doesn't take that long. Yeah, once a month, how many new patients, you know, how many came from Google, how many came from insurance. Yeah. Even if you don't know the exact number, you have an idea of, you know, 10 calls came in from these two sources, three of them closed, four of them accepted the case. And that's really all you need to look at. If that case and the closes are worth much more than you're putting into marketing, then you know it's working. Some other dentists, you know, they put like thousands and they have to track things a little different. They might go like the data route and the report route where, you know, they spend 5,000 a month trying to get an implant lead. And then they have to track the calls and listen to the calls and that whole funnel. We don't really get that deep into, you know, those types of ads and funnels and conversion tracking. We do keeping you proactive online, getting you found on Google, but we do support uh, 
dental offices that do that. We do have Google ads and Facebook ad programs if you want to do specific targeting of implants or other cases. So just call us and let's do a web assessment. Even if you're with another company, I'll give you unbiased advice. You don't have to sign up with us. Take it to them in a very nice manner and say, my, you know, a guy gave me some advice and said to look at these three things. And, you know, we're just talking, trying to get uh, more out of what we're doing with each other. I like it. And you know what I really like about you is like, you're very, of course, knowledgeable, but your honesty shines mm -hmm. through. And that, that is it's important to me, but also the way you streamline things. So, I mean, that's just what I see. And, yeah. Yeah. We try to make life easy. We've been doing this for, you know, 12, 15 years or whatever it is. We know yeah. what dentists go through on a daily basis and we know what works and we don't have to charge overcharge for what's working. And we don't have to, you know what I mean? It's just, every, if everyone does a little bit, it's going to thrive the practice and, Everyone has to play their part. The SEO is not going to change the business alone. Everything has to work together. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Yep. Real quick, Ali, if you can, one of the last questions, how long, if a doctor is like right now, I want to do a web assessment with doc sites. How does that look? If you can break it down for us, a web assessment. My personal cell phone number is 818-416-0007. Just text me. Text me, Michael, Sandy, podcast, whatever you want. Text me and say, I want to set up a, a demo. I'll get on the phone with you tomorrow. Go to docsites.com and click free uh, demo. I'll get your info. Just mention this podcast. You'll get it the next day. It's real easy. If you can't make it on the phone, I'll do it on video for you. I'll send you the video clip. You could take a peek at your own time and call me when you're ready. There's no pressured sales or you know anything like that here. We're just give you the, what you need as soon as possible and you could do uh, with it as you wish. Sounds so easy. Sounds so easy. Yeah, so, and and yeah. it's, it's, even if you don't work with it, just take that and use it for whatever. Just, just like, you know, every once in a while, it's good to check your life insurance policy and see, you know, maybe there's a tweak you could make to make it better. I don't know. Just, there's always room for improvement. Doesn't yeah. mean we have to tear the ship down and rebuild it. There you go. Yeah, I like that. All righty. So any final words for this episode, Sandy? I say just go for it. I mean, this is like, guys, so many of you, you're listening to this and and maybe you're working with somebody, you're not getting the results. And then I was thinking while Ali was talking, is like how many practices are doing nothing? They're, they're not doing any marketing. And just make that call. Make just that the call. basics. Just stay proactive online. That's all you need to do. You don't need to spend a lot of money couple hundred bucks will get you proactive. It will keep you moving. And if you have a bigger budget, there's better programs and different things we could do. There's a program for everyone. And again, just take advantage of the free web assessment. There's no obligations, no hidden strings, nothing like that. Just reach out and we'll be glad to help. And they can get started now. So they're not going to have a suck timber. You know, they're all worried about September. Not yeah. being, yeah. Because there's that law now, in, right yeah. Now. I know in August, September is always slows down for the dental. That's yeah. it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, so definitely do that. And guys, if you want to talk about this episode, come on the podcast or submit any questions, then you can do so by joining the Facebook group Dental Gumbo. And at the same time, everybody listening, just go ahead and get your free personalized, customized web assessment from Ali. Real quick, Ali, give us the number again that we can text you at. Text me at 818 416 triple zero seven like james bond but with three zeros and you could call our office anytime 888-980-4949 or go to docsites.com and just fill out our request form and just mention this podcast and i'll take care of you directly myself awesome and guys you know if you like what you see then everybody here gets an exclusive deal and you can check out that of deal course. in the in the link in the show notes below. So go ahead, text them or click on the first link in the show notes below to check out more, schedule your free personalized web assessment. And thank you all so much for tuning in. And we'll talk to you in the next episode. Thank you Bye, so everybody. much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.